happy Thursday and happy Facebook Live time. Welcome to Treehouse TV with um, Melissa Kerman and Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. I'm so happy you're here. Today I have some fun things to share with you. As always, I have some quick announcements. I have a project. Um, I have a giveaway today, which we will um, learn about at the end. So you have to stay to the end to see. Um, and you're also going to learn the 30 reasons <laughs> why I had to buy the Hey Chick bundle, <laughs> if you're familiar with what that is. So um, super excited um, to tell you uh, why I had to buy it. So I'm going to start with a little story. Um, and let's see, do I want to start with a little story? <laughs> um, yes, I'm going to start with the story. So. Um, some years back, I was going to a Stampin' Up! Uh, event. It was one of the onstage events, and I think it was in, I don't know, Atlanta maybe? And um, I was hanging out with some fellow demonstrators that I had met. Hello, Barbara. Hey, Chris. <laughs> Good to see people joining in. Um, and um, uh, focus on my story. <laughs> so distracting looking at comments. Um, so anyway, I was hanging out with one person that I knew, one person I'd gone with, and some other women that were uh, I had not never met before. So I was in being introduced to some of these women, and one of the women uh, said, um, uh, I, you know, uh, whatever, she just said, what did she say? She said, uh, I know you. Um, you're the chick in a treehouse. <laughs> And I had been, if you're not familiar with how Stampin' Up! works, when you have a team, you need to have a team name. And I had been kind of struggling with what my team name should be. My business is Melissa's Crafting Treehouse, but I hadn't come up with something. And when she said that, <laughs> hey, you're the chick in a treehouse, I just was like, ah, that has to be my name. <laughs> that has to be my business name or my team name, I should say. So my team are the treehouse chicks or chicks in a treehouse. I use, I use both. Um, and so this is it. The 30 reasons why I had to buy that stamp, st stamp set was because it has the sentiment in it, hey chick, and I just totally could tell that it had to have, hey treehouse chick. <laughs> in it. So that was the reason why I had to buy it. Now I was not crazy about this um, Hey Chick stamp set, but um, I have had a lot of fun with it and I'm so excited to share what I have with you today. I uh, kind of fell in love with it as I was playing with it, um, so I'm super excited to share my project. So that's my little story. <laughs> my how did I come up with the uh, Treehouse Chicks name. I must give credit where credit due is credit is due. Um, the fellow demonstrator who made this comment to me, her name is Lee Kaiser. Um, uh, so just a quick shout out to Lee because yay, she's the one who helped me come up with my name and I just love it. I think it's the cutest little thing ever. Now I will say that um, the Treehouse Chicks thing uh, was an inspiration because it's a treehouse, right? And chicks hang out in trees or birds hang out in trees. <laughs> So it seemed like a really nice kind of combination of, of thoughts. Um, but, uh, you know, the stamp set is more like farm chickens. But, you know, you know, you kind of stretch and make it work for you. <laughs> so anyway, that's a little aside. So um, anyway, so that's the little story of the 30 reasons. Because, well, why 30? Because I have 30 team members, <laughs> approximately. Um, so they are all the reasons why I had to have the set because because it's so cute. So anyway, um, uh, okay, so on to the announcements. Uh, I maybe should have revealed my 30 reasons later, but <laughs> um, super fun. Oh, somebody's giving me a little giggle icon. Thank you. <laughs> I don't even know how you do that. Somebody's gonna have to teach me one day. <clears throat> All right, so quick announcements. Um, I have my fun with rubbing alcohol class tomorrow. Super excited, fun with playing with rubbing alcohol. Um, and uh, that the registration for that is closed, but I'm super excited and the people that are in the group is, is great. It's the first time I'm gonna be doing it this way in a Facebook group, so super fun. Um, what else? Celebration ends in four days, oh my gosh. So you gotta take advantage of those freebies and um, getting the hostess rewards, that free stamp set. And then of course, as I talked about last week, all the free designer paper. I have to show you just because it's so much fun. I showed this last week, but these are, I mean, this is a ton of paper. 200 sheets of paper um, and four different patterns, completely neutral designs, etc. So anyway, there you go. So um, buy the starter kit. It's a great deal. <laughs> so 
that is my little plug for celebration. Okay, so I do have a giveaway today. Like I said, I'm going to share what it is at the end. Um, and I'm going to invite you all to do what you did last week if you were here with me, um, which is to um, share this video uh, here on Facebook, tag a friend who you think might enjoy the project that we're working on. You might be like, why should I do that now? I'll do it later when I see the project. Um, whenever you feel like it, please do it. Um, I just want to help spreading the word about what I do here at Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. So um, let's see. All right, so that's it for the announcements. Um, and if you are watching this video on YouTube, because I do post this video to YouTube, um, you can also share and get entered to the drawing for the prize. Um, you would, if you share on Facebook or Instagram, just leave a comment that you shared in those places um, and you'll get an entry in the drawing as well. And I will draw the winner on Monday. Still, surprise, you don't get to find out what you're going to win until the end. <laughs> so share because it's goodwill to share <laughs> um, or tag. All right, so um, let's just get into it. Okay, so I'm going to turn the camera down and we're going to get started with our project. Well. <clears throat> All righty. So good to see people. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Megan. Hi, Jackie. Um, yay. Hi, Robin. I know there were tons of other names that went by the screen, but I would never have gotten through my introduction if I had said hello to everybody. But hello, everybody. <laughs> All right, so here's the quick little tour. Hey, Chick, this stamp set right here is the set. Um, this is the set of dies, which actually I adore. I think they're just the cutest little shapes. So much fun. And if you know me at all, you know that I'm not a big cutesy kind of gal. I don't really do a lot with little animals and stuff, but I've had a lot of fun with this. And actually, I am very much a, uh, you know, a tiny little cute thing lover. <laughs> Anything small and little, I, I kind of have a, a soft spot for. And there are some adorable little dies in this set of HX dies. So, in fact, let's get started. I wanted to show you. I made this little, uh, you know, guide of the dies just because it's a lot easier to see them this way. So, of course, I stamped each of the little birds in there or chicks or whatever there you want to call them. Um, and all the different shapes, you do get four of the dies for the corn, four for the little, you know, for whatever greenery underneath the, the stalks or whatever you want to call it, um, the little house. Anyway, super cute, right? And then this is, of course, what comes out of here. Um, and then the wonderful chicken wire. Now, this I was actually the inside space of all of this. A little bit challenging to get that all on there. I will tell you, I used um, press and seal and pulled up the shapes and then attached them down on this with glue. So anyway, that was a little challenging, but wanted to be able to show you all these lovely, wonderful dies um, in an easy way. So that's the chick dies. Just adorable. All right, let's dive in. Okay, so I'm going to show you the project. I actually have three variations of the project. One of them I actually sent to somebody already. One of my lovely 30 reasons, <laughs> Kathleen Sorensen, um, got my original. And so I'm going to remake the original. This is my second version of the card. So I'm just going to give you a little sneak peek of it. Slight variation on the theme. Um, so this is my cute card. So look at all these adorable little elements in there. I've used a lot of the dies from that set of dies um, and just had a blast making this card. So we're going to start with some watercoloring and I need some paper towels. Hold on one quick second. They're over off to the side here. Should have had them ready. Always too many details, right? Okay. Got my paper towel and my parts and pieces here. So I'm going to do a very simple watercolor wash. Let's grab these and put them over to the side. On my background piece, I have already stamped my. Um, my chick and uh, and and die cut it of course just to save a little bit of time so I'm gonna grab one of my acrylic blocks and some balmy blue ink 
just put a little droplet onto my acrylic block, my little color palette there. And I'm using one of my water painters here. Now I want to spray my watercolor paper because when you're doing watercolor, you want it to be quite wet so that the ink moves around. Now the water, the ink will only go where the water is. So if I wanted to control it, I could have been more exacting about how I put the water on there, but I'm just going to do sort of a quick little whoop de doo and, and there you go. That's it. I'm going to leave it right like that. I'm going to set that aside to dry and it will dry a bit lighter than what you see there. Bring that back in later. And then I'm going to watercolor my little chick. Now this is where only wetting where you want the ink to go can be very handy. So I have taken my ink pads. Now you can squeeze the ink pads together to put the ink in the lid. Um, or you can take a droplet of ink and put it in the lid, which is what I did there. And I want my chicks, um, uh, what are those? Feathers? <laughs> There's probably a technical name for this part of the chick. Uh, does anybody know it? I'm sure there's a name for it. I'm going to watch and see if anybody knows it because usually somebody knows these things that I don't know. So I'm just grabbing the tiniest little bit. Now, if you buy the water painters, they come in three sizes. I'm only working with two of them today, the fattest one and the smallest one. And I can see that my light is a little bit funky. Let's fix the light a little bit. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Bridget. So glad you're joining in. <laughs> Fun to have you here. Oh, it's the comb. Okay, Megan, thank you so much. So this part of the, of the chick is the comb. I knew somebody out there would know this. Just my like encyclopedia of wisdom out there, you guys. Okay, so it makes it very easy to get it in the lines because there was only water in the lines. I did wet it ahead of time. So next I'm going to use my blushing bride. Now I don't have to be quite so careful on this part um, just because I'm going to be covering more of it. Again, I've got a bunch of ink in the lid, but I do want it to be wet. So I wet it first, then I'm going to add that blushing bride ink to the face and I don't know, what are these? I mean, they're just more feathers, right? But it looks like his arm <laughs> or her arm. She is one of my chicks after all, right? So it's gotta be, it's gotta be a, a woman. I don't have any men chicks. <laughs> all right, so I just colored over the whole thing. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more dark color to the edge just to give me a little bit of shading. And I can always squeeze. There's a spot on this to squeeze to get the color to come out. Hi, Kale. <laughs> I just happened to look up and see Gail's name jump across the screen. Let's add just a little bit more. Okay, so now that's all I'm going to do of that color for now. And now I'm going to do a little bit of Calypso Coral. So I'm squeezing a little bit of water. You can probably see it there. And I'm just going to cover the rest of my chick. Okay, open up that Calypso Coral. And I'm going to use the Calypso Coral for this sort of right portion of his body. I keep calling it a him. Her body. <laughs> Why am I thinking a chick has to be a, a boy? Not a boy, right? Okay, so here's another question for those wise, wise people out there. Um, let's see, is a rooster a boy and a chick a girl? Is that right? I gotta look on the screen. Somebody's gonna comment and let me know. The things we need to know in life. Okay, looking. <laughs> Hi, Jan. Glad to see you here. Okay, so the question on the table is, a chick always a girl? <laughs> and a, a rooster is a boy. 
Okay, so now I got lighter, uh, less uh, of the Calypso on my um, brush. So I'm just kind of spreading it around. And then I'm going to go back in with a little bit more of my Blushing Bride because I want this portion of my chick to be lighter. And then I want his little feet, there we go again, her little feet, determined to make it a girl. Comments. A chick is a girl, a rooster is a boy. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Jan. Okay, so I'm grabbing a little bit of my Calypso, and that's going to be, and this is where the, this fine tip, if I can hold it and do it in the air, is very helpful. This is tricky because I've got to keep it super steady while I do it. Because uh, those little feet are pretty small. Okay, let's do the last bit down here. All right, now and if you get it out the lines, outside the lines, it's no big deal, right? And I might go back in and do a little bit more accenting of sort of key spots with my uh, Calypso, so I have some darker segments there, but I'm just going to stop right there for the moment. Okay, so my water coloring is done, and now the strategic plan to do the water coloring first because it takes a little bit of time to dry. Um, so there is that. And then, there's, so I'm going to bring in some of my other pieces now. Done with the water coloring and the wet stuff. So I can get rid of my brushes. All right, so I've got a card body here that is balmy blue, four and a quarter by 11, folded in half, and a piece of early espresso. I've got some of my pieces taken care of. Now, this is not in the dies, okay? When I bought these dies, I was thinking I was getting a little fence, but I was mistaken. There's a little itty bitty fence in the other bundle that coordinates with this one called Hey Birthday Chick. It's a simpler uh, gate and it's um, smaller, shorter, the wider um, pickets, um, and I don't have a picture to show you. But I had to get creative, go figure. <laughs> Um, so I pulled this die from my, um, what is it called? Garden Gateway dies. Let me see if I have them right here. I think I do. Had them handy. Yes. Um, I thought, well, I can get the same effect and use this set of dies instead. Okay. So there's this piece here, which cuts a gate, but it doesn't give you any detail. So what I used was I used this piece and I just die cut the bottom, the bottom half, right? So it's intended to be an arbor. So this is gonna just work perfectly for my project. So I wanted it to look um, you know, uniform. So what I'm going to do is just trim it off in such a way that I create the little point at the top of my last um, picket, I guess is what it's called. Uh, on the left and on the right. So I'm just using my paper snips and actually when I did this the first time I lined up my scissors so that it was uh, abutting this edge right here so that I'd have the same basic angle and then did the other side in a similar way. So you get the idea, right? Now it's this cute little fence, right? Adorable, right? <laughs> yeah, everybody thinks chicks are women. Well, yeah. So that kind of makes sense, right? Okay, um, let's see what else. Okay, so now we've got our little fence taken care of. Now I'm going to take my first corn stalk and attach it to the behind my fence. So I'm gonna use some glue dots for a lot of these steps. And uh, as I Think about where I want this. I'm going to be kind of lining these up. Now, I will tell you, I don't know about you guys, but when there's something, there's always something in a set that makes me go, I have to have that. These corn stalks were the thing in this die that made me go, I have to have this because they're so darn cute and, and delicate and they almost look real, right? Just love it. Okay, so I'm kind of getting my lining up here, visualizing where I want it, and then I'm going to turn it over, 
take my paper piercing tool and find where I can put my um, glue dot so that it doesn't show, but it attaches my corn stalk uh, onto it. So I'm just basically looking for a spot of solid fence that will hold it, all right? So I'm gonna do probably another spot or two just to make sure that it is attached well enough, but I have one that is already completed, so save us a little bit of time. So this one is already done. Um, so now the next thing I'm gonna do, and I've actually already put my glue dots on the back. I'll explain that in just one second. Now, to do my corn, these are all tiny little pieces, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my multi-purpose liquid glue, put the tiniest little bit of it on the end of my corn, spread it out so it doesn't ooze out and make a mess. And then I'm gonna grab my, looking for it, it's around here somewhere. Dang it, where is it? <laughs> I thought I had it here. Two seconds ago, I'm looking for my paper piercing tool. I'm sorry, my, paper, my what is it called? Take your pick tool, thank you. This is what I'm looking for because it has this fabulous sticky little putty end to allow me to pick up the leaves of the corn or the husks of the corn, I guess is what they're called, and place it right where I need it to be. So that way I don't have to touch the glue or anything. Okay, so I have done that one. I've got two others completed. You can see them on the back. And those are all set, so I need all three of them. And then I'm gonna go ahead and attach. And I'm gonna attach my corn to the stalk. Now I chose to do two different colors for my stalks so that the soft sea foam one would kind of look a little bit in the background and the pear pizzazz one would, you know, stand out more and be more in the foreground. So um, besides, you know, plant matter doesn't all look the same, right? Uh, on a plant, you might have different shades of a color on it. So I thought that might make it look quite natural. So, um, and again, by the power of TV, by the magic of TV, I have one that's done. <laughs> Yay. So I will say, and as you, I'm sure you can tell, this, is, um, this card is a labor of love, right? And I do love my team, so it's worth the labor. <laughs> but um, there's lots of little pieces, makes it fun, but there's also some time involved, and I didn't want to keep you here all night long. So on the back side of my gate, um, I have dimensionals, I'm sorry, glue dots rather. They're stacked up two, um, one on top of each other. And that is because, of course, I've got this layer here, which is gonna sort of um, push it up. And I wanted the, the uh, fence to look a little bit raised as well. So when you do two or even three layers, it um, makes it raised up a little bit. And I, I was looking for that multi-dimensional look. Now, on the back side of my corn stalk, I've done kind of the same thing. So. I have um, a single layer glue dot uh, on the spot that's right on the pear pizzazz um, uh, corn stalk, but then I have uh, a folded over, folded over layers of my glue dots on the pieces of corn that are down lower so that it sits at the same level. So not, you're not having one element of it that's kind of pushed down. So I want my little corn to look like they're raised up so it looks more real, right? All right. so. Let's now, I need a dry focal piece and my piece that I did in front of you guys is a little bit wet. So guess what? I have another one, yay. <laughs> so we're gonna use the dry one. Never know how long these things take to dry. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my uh, assembled uh, gate onto this. Now I need my scissors again, which I, Put over here. So I'm just going to snip off what's hanging below the end line of the bottom of the gate so it doesn't stick out behind it. And I'm just going to go ahead and attach this 
on the left side of my piece. So now um, I do want to tell you, right, so some people think um, that I dream these things up completely in my own head. Now occasionally, I do, <laughs> I come up with it's 100% original, but nine times out of ten there's something else that's inspired me that I'm using um, as an idea, a jumping off point. So you guys may recall that some of the Stampin' Up! Uh, samples that have been shared with this Hey Chick set, it had the this little cornstalk and this is this is the single thing that made me go I have to have those dies <laughs> so how many of you out there have um, a thing that that makes you go even if it's just one thing or two things in a set or a set of dies where you go I have to have that I don't care about any other things but I have to have that well this is the thing this is the thing that made me have to have those dies aside from my 30 reasons which are my team of course um, that's the more important thing of course so um, my glue dots are all on there, so I'm going to go ahead and attach this. And I'm just going to lay it down so that I can make sure that I've got enough room for my chick on the right-hand side. Now, my chick is probably still wet too, the one that I just did. So guess what? I've got another one. Now notice this one, I was way all outside the lines on this one. It still looks good. So what, right? <laughs> so it's all good, right? So, so you do, Sharon. Tell, tell me, give me an example. Tell me, what, there have, what stamp set have you got recently or, or dies or anything where you go, I have to have that one thing. What was that one thing? Because that happens to me a lot. All right, so on my chick, I'm going to do something like what I did with the other things where I'm going to use my glue dots and on this, it's going to straddle the, the fence and the um, background. So in the spots where it's... Um, on the fence, I'm going to use one layer of glue dots, and on the spots that are on the card base, I'm going to use two. And that way, I take um, into account the um, extra thickness of my gate. So, am I remembering what I'm doing here? Okay, so this side is the double because it's the on the card, on the focal piece, on the watercolor paper, and then the other side's going to be my single layer if I don't bunch it up and you know this is a small little detail but you know that's what I do small details are important to me anyway now on my original card um, I was playing around with you know should I use crumb cake for my fence or do I want it to be the um, what did I use for that I think it was gray granite maybe I'm sure I have it on my supply list um, so this version I'm making here is with crumb cake and the original one that I did is with the gray granite okay so let's get my cornstalk on there and there you go and I chose my chicken okay so the element that I sort of stole from the idea that gave me the inspiration was the background watercolored sky and my corn stalks. They, of course, use the tiny little fence that comes with the Hey Birthday Chick set. Um, oh, the corn was also why you had to get that die set? Yes. <laughs> and yes, um, you had to get the gate die too. Okay. Good for you, Jan. <laughs> so cute, right? I was just, like I said, I was so disappointed when I realized that the little gate wasn't in the set of dies that I bought. But uh, obviously, I have made do. Okay, so this was the element. That was my inspiration. And then I picked the chick based upon I wanted the chick to be facing my corn. I can't remember what the original one looked like, but I think it was a different chick. Um, and I may have even been a different layout, but, you know, this was it. This was the key piece that I just loved. So this was my starting place. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I've got my chicken wire is what I'm calling it. Now I uh, die cut this with the brass um, foil papers, which is very shiny. And I'm just gonna cut this in half. I'm gonna use the other half on a, a different card. And I have put some glue on the back side, um, but it's not actually very tacky. I did my trick where I put the white glue on there and let it dry. But I think I'm going to have to put some adhesive down at the bottom to get it to actually uh, stay. All right, so I'm going to make sure that's the bottom. And I'm just going to put some adhesive down there so 
so that I can get my chicken wire down there. Now this creation was a Friday night me playing project and um, if you um, read my, my blog post I'll, t I'll give you a little secret of <laughs> what I'm writing in it. So I was actually uh, making this card for one of my team members who had won uh, the, one of the, dra the prize drawings that we did for the Makers Mojo event. And we were actually talking by text that night, and she knew I was working with this, but she didn't know I was working on a card for her. So um, it was so fun. I felt so sneaky. <laughs> Isn't it fun to be sneaky? Uh, let's see. You can't remember the name, but they went with the poppy dies. Hmm. I'm trying to think. I can't remember what the names of those are. All right. So um, the next thing I'm going to do on this is... Let's work on the sentiment, okay? So now, if you don't have, if you're not a treehouse chick and you don't have, like, you know, the need to add treehouse, you could center your hay chick um, sentiment so that it's centered on the paper. I've stamped mine towards the bottom because I am going to add something. And where's my pen? This is the important thing where it brings the whole darn thing together. I'm going to do a little whatever that symbol is, and I'm just going to write treehouse check that out hey treehouse chick <laughs> isn't that just perfect I mean how could I not get it right my 30 treehouse chicks think of all the cards I can make to send to my treehouse chicks it's just too perfect all right so the next thing I'm gonna do is um, take my little paper snips and I'm gonna make a little banner out of it so I like to snip up the center just the tiniest bit and then come in the sides I'm glad you love it, Sharon. Yay. All right, so I've got one that's actually already done. So I did the other side. There's my hay, tr hay treehouse chick. Now, on my original card, I said thank you for being on my team. On the one that I sent to, um, to Kathleen, it said, hey, chick, congratulations, because, of course, she had won a prize. So that was the right thing to do. On this one, I want to show you an option for um, if you don't have a particular attachment to the treehouse sentiment um, that you could um, just use, hey chick, have a happy day, right? So I have a sentiment here that's just, hey chick, that I've done in the same way, have a happy day. So we're going to use those. I've got glue dots on the back of uh, both of them so that I can just go ahead and attach them. So it's, you know, nice to have something that's a little bit more neutral. So, and there you go. And it's got this sort of whimsical, fun, playful feel, which is why I wanted the sentiments, to one to be facing one way, one to be facing the other. Um, and this is really like the core center of the card. Now, um, got a few more elements to add to this. And because this is, you know, sort of a farm style feel, I felt like it needed to be kind of roughed up a little bit. So I'm going to curl up my edges. I'm going to just stress them a little bit. Make it look that sort of rustic, farmy kind of feel. At least that's how I visualize it. And I'm doing two kind of curled up. And I'm just squishing it with my finger, making it all rough. And I could do it on all four sides if I wanted to, the full length. But I'm just going to keep it simple and do those corners. And then I'm going to actually tear my early espresso cardstock again to give it that kind of roughed up look and the texture. Um, can you just envision me doing this on a Friday night? I'm like, this is my, I'm playing and uh, just having so much fun. <laughs> okay, so there's my, my torn part on the top. And I'm just going to gauge my size. I'm going to tear it on the bottom. And then I'm going to do a little bit more roughing up. So these are the parts and part of why I had so much fun making this, right, is the jumping off point was this other thing I'd seen. Um, and I had seen some other cards that just had kind of roughed up elements on them. And some of the old things, in fact, I put, took out some old samples that were from sets from way long ago that also had a chick theme, but it was, didn't have that same sentiment and it was much older. 
but they had roughed up pieces. And we used to sell this, um, I don't know, it was like some specialty um, accessory that had like a, this look to it, the um, chicken wire look. So I was like, okay, I gotta use those elements and make it look so farmy like. So there's my tearing and my distressing. I could probably sponge the edge, but I don't really think it needs it. Um, and then, okay, so we're gonna lay out my pieces here. Now, I did one other thing on my original card, and um, I may do something different here just because it's easier, but now uh, let's see. Maybe I will do the same thing. Okay, so I took a piece of my um, uh, braided linen trim, and I just decided it should be kind of stressed. Same kind of thing as um, the idea of the stressed cardstock edges. So I'm just kind of pulling it apart, kind of making a mess of it. Why I think that it should be messy on this part of it, I'm not really sure. But I'm thinking like a burlap bag or some rope in a farm or I don't know. Just like stress that baby out. Somehow seems more fitting for a farm than something neat and orderly. And then felt folded it over. I'm just going to grab a couple glue dots and place them strategically to get this attached. I'll show you my original one, or the one I showed you earlier anyway, since I can't show you the original one. Um, that one just had uh, it tied around the bottom, which is a simpler way to do it, of course. You know what? I think I need to attach these two first. Okay, where's my adhesive? Let's do this first. Um, I can't remember, was it last week I showed this? Uh, I was using the, the new um, seal and I finally mastered how to use it. Hopefully I will not prove myself wrong in demonstrating this right now. But the trick, right? This is the cool trick. I think, um, I think it was Wendy, my friend Wendy Lee, who, who um, I watched sh uh, show this. But it's the, you know, pressing it on there and then pulling it like this, tipping it up to release it. And, uh, oh, she shared another great tip. I have to share that with you. If you have a silicone craft mat, if your adhesive pulls out and you don't have adhesive at the tip anymore, you can use your silicone craft mat to help advance the adhesive. And it, she showed it, it worked beautifully. I have not actually tried it. I haven't had the opportunity because it hasn't been a problem, but um, I just thought that was a fabulous tip. So we all need tips, right? Pass that along. So I'm getting my spacing here and I'm gonna do this kind of, what do they call it? Caddy corner. <laughs> I want my focal piece to be straight up and down and square parallel to the sides, but I want my espresso to be a little bit at an angle. And again, if you watch me much, you'll know I don't really do the caddy wampus thing very often, but it just seemed fitting for this particular design. Okay, let's see. I have a thing for order. <laughs> <laughs> but it's candy wampus, it doesn't feel orderly to me. But I love this, even still. So, you know, I can stretch my, stretch my um, desires and likes when I see something that I really like. Okay, so let's see. It took me a little bit of time to kind of get this where I wanted it when I did it the first time. And I don't want my glue dot to show, it has to be kind of hidden. So, I actually hid part of it underneath. Here, let's do this. Put it on my espresso and then it'll help to hold it down and not show. All right, I'm almost done. Let's get that there. This is the hardest part of the whole thing. What does it say? Okay, square on, square on. That's the other thing when you're doing it kind of cattywampus is like you can't tell which way you're looking. I didn't put any adhesive on the backside. Lordy, lordy. It's not staying. I wonder why. <laughs> okay. I feel so excited that I have mastered this adhesive thing. I struggled with it for a while. I feel so happy. <laughs> the little things in life that make you happy. Okay, now I can make this happen. And I think that looks about right. 
Okay, I might need another little glue dot down in there, but I'm not going to struggle with it right now. You guys get the idea. I've got my my little ribbon down at the bottom. Oh yes, very whimsical and fun. Thank you, Robin. I'm so glad you like it. Um, it's just it's fun to kind of get out of your normal, you know, your patterned behavior, if you will, the things that you're normally you know, tend to do, and do something a little bit different. And it was just such a fun thing to do on a Friday night. So there's my two versions, and of course the one that I sent to Kathleen again had the Hey Treehouse Chick. Congratulations instead of the have a happy day and then there's this one of course and then there's another one that I've done I did it for a couple of my other team members and um, in this case I'm just going to show it to you because it's a lot of the same elements I sent this because um, when my team members um, reach a certain sales milestone I send them a customized bone folder um, that has their name on it and then the um, my you know the logo the little, my cute little tree logo and um, and it says, uh, I'm a Treehouse Chick team member. So it's one of the little perks that I do for my team. And I sent the two women who just recently reached that milestone this cute little card. So hey, Treehouse Chick, congratulations. Of course, I used my other chicken in the set. And this one, I also used the Poppy Parade for his um, hair and tail or whatever. And then I used Crushed Curry to color the body. And this one, of course, is a little bit simpler, but the same basic elements. I didn't do all the fussy stuff with the other elements in there, but super cute. And the size is completely different from anything you might ever see. I think it ended up being three and five eighths by four and a half. And that was just because this focal piece is what I worked on at first. And I backed it and I was like, okay, let's make a small card. Why not? Right? So it fits in a regular envelope, even though it's a little small, but, um, there is my version number three of my cute little cards. So I hope you guys like these. And um, uh, let's see, what else? What else? Am I missing something? Let me grab. Um, all right, so I, I must remind you that if you haven't already, I hope you've shared this video or will. If you're watching live or on the replay, please do, or tag friends. They can always watch um, the replay if they didn't catch it live. Um, and uh, let's see. So uh, I've talked a little about the whole design process and pretty much um, one other thing I want to add to that in the design was of course this element and the chicken wire really all about sort of the texture, um, the added texture to an interest to the piece. and more dimension. So um, that was how it all came together. All right. So I'm going to recap announcements and then I will let you guys go. So just, um, oh, and I have to tell you what you have potentially to win. Hold on. Uh. Let's turn the camera and we can finish up. Oh my. You see my lovely light there. Not so graceful. <laughs> I mean, what the heck? What can you do, right? All right. Um, I can't wait to read your comments because I miss so many. Um, the the wild hair chick. I know, so cute. And the corn stalk. Yes, I'm totally with you, Gwen. So cute. Um, and this was so fun to play with. So, uh, okay. So just uh, reminders, and then we'll finish up. So don't forget to take advantage of celebration if you haven't already, or even if you have. If there's things you still want. Um, you can get freebies with your orders, of course, for every increment of $50 that you spend in merchandise, um, free hostess set, and of course, the starter kit special happening right now with the designer paper. So if you um, buy the starter kit, it's, um, you get $182.50 worth of products and you're spending $99. So it's a great deal, plus of course, 10% off. Now, um, this brings me to the, who, what you're gonna win if you um, win the drawing. <laughs> So I'm going to draw on Monday to give people on Facebook um, and YouTube both an opportunity to, to um, share. Um, but what you're going to win is I'm going to send you this card. <laughs> what do you think? Who wants the card? Would you join Stampin' Up! and be a Treehouse Chick just to get this card? Well, maybe not. <laughs> but there's so many other benefits and then this would be another fun thing to get. So um, I'm on a mission to make a whole bunch of those. Uh, they're a lot of work. Um, but I'm sure that all of my team members would love to have one of those. 
Um, so, but either way, I have made this card in such a way that whoever the winner is, they can use it. I will not write inside. I will allow you to write inside and use it as you see fit, or it can just be a source of information, um, of inspiration for you as well, or make your own or whatever. Um, let's see. Uh, Jennifer's asking, let's see, what is behind you? The butterfly colors. Butterfly colors? Behind me? <laughs> what am I missing? Oh, 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 you, oh, are you looking? Oh, I see what you're looking at. Just one second, let me grab it. Oh my, hope I'm not gonna, ah, there's one missing from the bottom. I made this chart a while ago. Oh darn, I think one of, I think the bottom panel fell off. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> um, this is actually with the, um, it is a current stamp set. I'm forgetting what it's called, but I, I actually have this on my website on a blog post. If you um, message me or tag me, I will find it and I will um, tag you and let you know. I did each of these, the coloring in different ways. I did two-step stamping. I did um, stamping off. I did blends markers and I did them all in different colors. Um, so on the graphic on my website, it's all illustrated with all that information. So I hope that's what you're talking about. Yes, that is, it's so fun and colorful, isn't it? And I, and I think there's one more panel at the bottom that may have fallen down in behind my furniture here. <laughs> so anyway, uh, a slight little digression. Um, so anyway, um, I hope you'll consider the starter kit if you haven't already. Um, Butterfly Gala, thank you, Amy. Thank you so much for pointing that out. That will help me find it if, uh, if you want me to... Um, share that post with you or if you go to my blog there is a search bar at the very top on the right hand side on the main blog page it's got multiple blog listings and then on the side margin at the top is a search bar you can type in butterfly gala and it will probably show up because undoubtedly i have that tagged in there but let me know if you want me to help you find it okay jennifer just let me know all right um so I guess that pretty much finishes it. I will be here next uh, Thursday. Next week will be the Simple Sweet Stampers tutorial bundle sneak peek projects. Um, I will show you mine and I will show you one others from the team. Um, most likely I'll have to redo it if I don't have exactly what they had, but that's part of the fun, right? So that will be next week. Um, celebration of course ends Sunday. And if you are considering joining, Definitely recommend doing it sooner rather than later um, because the 28th falls on a Sunday. If there's any technical problems, Stampin' Up! won't be open on Sunday. <laughs> so if you can do it before Friday, that would be ideal. Hopefully there won't be technical problems. People try to join over the weekend. But um, let me know if you're at all interested in the starter kit. If you have questions, if you want to have a phone conversation, I am available for, um, to help you decide if it really makes sense for you because it's really all about you and what makes sense for you. So. Um, Anyway, I will be back next Thursday. That will be March 3rd, and I will look forward to it. Thank you so much for joining in. I hope you've loved the project and are inspired to go create something yourself <laughs> or buy the Treehouse, the, the Chick, Hey Chick bundle <laughs> or the Hey Birthday Chick bundle. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful evening and happy crafting. Yay. Thanks for the thumbs up and hearts that always make me so happy. And don't forget to share and tag your friends. I so appreciate it. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. Mwah! Ha, ha, ha.